mission and be the peacemaker. But I always say false peace is no peace at all. We try to maintain peace that's not there. That's what right. we try to do. So you, you begin to change what you watch, what you hear, because it's going through your vision and your hearing. You begin to, you begin to change the, in, what you create in your inner space. You get in charge of your inner space and you make a decision. Then you begin to put new seeds in your soil. You can start right this second to replant new seeds. Welcome to the Kelly and Jerry Show. I'm Kelly. This is Jerry. And uh, you know, normally we have we show our big living room. We start off the show. We're we're ready to go and bring you into a brand new show. But yesterday, oh my word, uh, or last week, we had just such a time with our friend Carla Shellis and. I don't know. It was, she was. We were closed, and I'm like, "Don't Whoa! go." We we're stopping go. in the middle of a sentence, and yes. I bet you felt the same way. Yeah, I encourage you if you didn't see that show to go back and watch it. It was so good. So we begged her to stay, and she obliged. So Yay. she's still here, Carla. Thank Yay. you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank I'm you. happy. She's yeah. here. Listen, I can stay here till tonight. Let's just order in some food. Let's just keep rolling. Huh? Hey, you know, we need to do that. We need a conference. We yeah, know. let's it's, do it. It is I'm actually ready. one of our dream vision yes. things to have a, a Freedom House conference and just bring freedom let's like in it. person. We got it. <laughs> bring I'm ready. to everybody. <laughs> so we're ready to, to rock and roll with the... You didn't even get through all your props. I know. I've got some good stuff for you guys. I think it'll help you. I I love to just share because it set me free. Well, your yeah. visuals, I think, so help good. so much when you're able to see it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, right. I, I told you, I've gone back when you were on last time and remembered a visual that you showed. So I think it's so important. That's the only way I know how to learn. This I, is I, your fourth time on the show. Is it? Yes. Yes, yes right. Yes. Uh, I, I don't think we've had anybody else. I need to be like Celine Sometimes Dion on Oprah. She was the most <laughs> invited guest ever. I'm like, okay, that can become a goal with you guys. Okay. <laughs> but I really do encourage you to just go, like, don't even keep going on this show. Go back and watch, if you can, go back and watch the show before. Mm. And because uh, it's really critical to, but if you can't, watch this one or watch them both. Well, you're way. talking about breaking through of those thoughts. The patterns. The patterns. So one of the things I want you to just briefly, maybe you could just hold it up your little sign there. Because that's oh, where I think we okay. have to establish this, what you said, because the, I want to ask a question about this. Yeah. So. The, the thing I said last time was um, we have 60 to 70,000 thoughts per day. Each person does. 60 to 70,000 70, thoughts per day. Okay. And the fun, the fun part of that is 50% of our thoughts from the past are not true, which I, I, I found that astonishing when I learned that. We waste a lot of time. Well, I'm thinking of the past. Okay. So 90%, which I took earlier, where it was a blank thing, I took a, a marker and, and scrubbed out 90% because uh, each box represents 10,000 thoughts. 90% of those thoughts are from yesterday. Mm -hmm. They're from our past. 10% of our thoughts are only about the future. So as a normal human being, without the healing, without the freedom, without the knowledge and the wisdom, we live our lives with only 10% of the future. That's why we're in cycles. That's why we can't break out of into the place God has for us, which is that abundant life that he talks about so much in the Bible. Right. I'm like, where is that abundant life? Because mm -hmm. I don't feel like I'm living it. That was my 20 years of my life. Right. So then understanding that, well, no wonder, because 90% of my thoughts are from yesterday. That's going to take me nowhere but to yesterday. I can't right. go forward. You, we cannot go forward that way. So that's how we started the conversation about why we're stuck in that cycle and how, and my goal is to reverse it mm -hmm. and to make 90% of my thoughts about the future and 10% of my thoughts about the past, which I call my wisdom. And that, you I said it's a, it's a disciplined exercise. It's a disciplined exercise. Do. Yeah. You, and, and I like what you said earlier that, um, you have to go, no, I'm not thinking that. You know, we had some we had some stuff happen, and we've 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 been 30 years in the roofing business here in the Metroplex, and for about 10 of those years, we had a really hard time. 
And a lot of decisions were made that should not have been made, and it was a bump in the road. But I had a really bad habit of bringing all of those thoughts of the past and all of the real trauma of the past back to the future, back to my present, to justify my place, mm. to make myself right. That did nothing but hold me back. Well, we hear that all the time, but I didn't know it was like literally, mm -hmm. like literally I was repelling and not drawing. Mm -hmm. That's what I was doing. Mm -hmm. So you, you're really saying, you're saying, cause this, it sounds good on the surface if you pass over it, but how are you gonna do it is my question. You're telling us to take 90% of those negative thoughts. Of the past. Of the past and only keep 10% and call it wisdom. That's right. So that is a big order though. How do I get rid of those thoughts that don't belong in my wisdom bag? And how do I know the difference? And how do I trim down? I mean, we've, we've had a, uh, her sister on talking about clutter. Uh -huh. How am I gonna declutter my past question. thoughts and come out with my little, uh, m you know, the minimalists, which all everybody today is these minimalists yeah. in their house. I can't even imagine making my house minimalist. I know. Because, <laughs> but getting rid of 90% and keeping 10, I, that, I need we get you this to back talk out? to me about yeah. that. Okay, well, I'm going to show you. Because, you know, Terry um, has been such an inspiration in my, my We're life. We're talking about Terry Foy. Foy, yeah, You're, along with Terry and sister. millions of other people. But she has a concept about decluttering. Take 20 minutes a day and just find one thing to declutter. Okay. So I would say the same thing about our thoughts of the past. So if you have something in the past that you still haven't let go of, take 20 minutes a day to put these exercises into place okay. that I teach in order to reverse that thinking. Mm -hmm. Cause it is actually an exercise. You can't just be like, okay, I'm done with that. And then be done with it. it it's, it's an, okay. Um, one of my mentors says, Thoughts that fire together, wire together. So mm. I literally saw in one of his lessons that you have neurons inside uh, around your brain. And whenever you start thinking thoughts that are of the past and that are negative, they literally multiply huge fast time. Like they multiply mm -hmm. and they start wiring together. So that's why it's literally like you got to rewire, you know, Caroline. So wait, leave. if mm -hmm. you have this thought, then you got to think all these. And this is why you don't sleep at night. That's right. <laughs> Says Dr. Kelly. That's right. You absolutely right. I mean, Dr. Caroline Leaf has the most amazing stuff on this. So let me show you this really quick. So you have, this is my little drawing. I hope we can see that. But you have your conscious mind. And then your subconscious mind is the soil. And I always tell everybody, imagine you have a 10 acre lot and it's flat and you have a 10, every human has a 10 acre lot. From the moment you're in your mother's womb, seeds started getting planted in that soil, mm -hmm. okay? So I just purpose it after soil. And then this is like life dropping seeds and it comes through all five of your senses, mm -hmm. okay? That's how you get into your subconscious mind. Well, all of these seeds begin to grow and these are gonna be environments that we create. These are gonna be what we watch and what we listen to. These are the words that we say, what, the, what, we, what people we allow in our inner space. We talked about the inner space last right. time. Um, what we create, thoughts we think, environments that we allow, and our emotions. Those are the things that begin to go into your subconscious mind. Now, I often ask people, do you want, the, typically this is what it looks like. It looks like weeds. Mm -hmm. Then weeds start to grow up and it clogs our thinking. It clogs our thoughts. I mean, our, our literally our emotions begin to get crazy mm -hmm. because we're living amongst thorns and bushes, right? Mm -hmm. Or do we want to have a sub, do we want our 10 acres to be fruit trees and flowers? I want mine to be fruit and flowers. I'm tired of living in the weeds, yeah. right? So I, my question was, okay, well, if I want to get rid of the weeds and that's what most of us feel like right now that we live in the weeds. So how do I mow that down? And how do I, because I grew up, like this is not my story, but a lot of people I work with in human trafficking, they didn't have a chance. Like they grew up in the weeds. They grew up in emotional trauma. They grew up so many, so they didn't have a chance. Their soil was already planted with horrible seeds. So we have to go back in and we have to take the, do the therapy to then change it to re, I mean, ripping up all those weeds and then putting fresh seeds down so that we can get fresh growth. So how do we do that? We begin to change the environments that we live in. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I don't allow screaming and hollering in my house anymore. 
even though it used to feed me and it was part of my addiction because I wanted to jump in and fix it. I wanted to jump in and be the peacemaker. But I always say false peace is no peace at all. Mm-hmm. You, we try to maintain peace that's not there. That's what right. we try to do. So you, you begin to change what you watch, what you hear, because it's going through your vision and your hearing. You begin to, you begin to change the, in, what you create in your inner space. You get in charge of your inner space and you make a decision that where I stand will be warmth, will be love, will be um, encouragement, will be other centeredness and not self-centeredness. I will not have anything to do with offense, even though it's offensive. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to allow it. So I start to change. So now I put elevated emotions behind my vision. So my vision board, my declarations every day of what I am, call those things that are not as so they are. I put elevated emotions. So I'm not like, I am a child of God. I am advantage. I am this. I am that. You know, it's just repetitive. Mm -hmm. But when you put power behind it. And faith. And faith. Yes. And elevated emotion. And you know that God says what he says is right. Right. And it will manifest. Then you begin to put new seeds in your soil. Mm -hmm. You can start right this second to replant new seeds. You know, Carla, people used to look at me growing up and I appeared very confident. Uh I was popular in high school and all those things, but I was the most insecure girl. Mm-hmm. I mean, just riddled with insecurity. But when I really, and I grew up knowing this, mm-hmm. my words have power and all that. But when I really looked in the mirror and began to believe what I spoke about myself, mm-hmm. it did change the soil it does. of who I am because I was riddled with insecurity and, and carried that with me. But when I really believe that Jesus made me the way he wanted me. Right. That he was pleased with me. Right. And that I was enough. Right. And I didn't have to be like my sister. Right. You know, you could be like I you. I could be Jerry. Right. And it's okay. That's right. Then I was confident to be who I am. And it really works it when does. you do it. It does. does. Or you can keep throwing in the thoughts of the past and it really keeps producing weeds. Yes. Right. So then you think, you said insecurity, and mm-hmm. I know that part of your testimony is, is rejection. That's mm-hmm. what I suffered with as well. Right. So I want to share something with you guys about, can I use you as a prop again? Sure. sure. Okay. Let, I'm going to have you stand to up too, Jerry, because okay. we're going to show you. This is kind of what we showed you guys in the last, um, in the last segment. Mm-hmm. I showed you the hula hoop, right? But this is the space that anxiety resides in. So whenever I start to feel anxious, so this space gets as big as you allow it. Right. Mm -hmm. So we talk about rejection. If I if my space is this wide open and I I am wide open for rejection, Mm -hmm. when I feel like I'm going into a relationship or I'm going to see a relative, maybe that might have been a trigger for me for rejection or whatever. And you think I have to see you once a year. So I've got to I've got to control me. What I do with my survivors uh, in the safe house is I want to get you to a place when you can walk in and out of the fire and not smell like smoke. Mm -hmm. That's what I want you to do because I can't change your family. I can't change every person you come across, but I can help you manage you. Mm-hmm. So this is how we walk when we're in our relaxed state. Like we, we're we open. Mm-hmm. But the second that things begin to get a little tense and I'm feeling the pressure, I tell people all the time when they call me, what do I do? Decrease your space. Mm-hmm. Decre- now this is all the space that I have given anybody around my atmosphere mm-hmm. to control. There- nobody can come into that space. It's too tight. Right. This is less for me to manage. So in my mind, I decrease the space. If I'm around my husband who I trust and love and he is part of me, my space is as wide open as I can get. I got around somebody recently from my past that gives me a load of anxiety. And in my mind, I thought, I can already feel my blood pressure pumping. This just happened to me. Like I let someone from my past get in this space. And I had to call my husband. I'm like, (gasps) and he's like, no, 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 no. And I had to tighten what you're saying exactly. So good. Well, so I've heard this many times. This is what I get from my clients. Mm -hmm. Um, My ex-husband or my mom or my dad, you know, they called me and they really just tore me up again. And I just don't know what to do. And I said, speaking about one one person in particular with an ex-husband, why does he have access to you? That's good. And she said, well, because we have children together. I go, let me ask you that again. Why does he have access to you? Mm -hmm. He made a comment on Facebook. Why is he? Well, I can't block him just in case. I said, no, you can block him. Mm -hmm. 
you, the problem is you're literally like you're still the issue. Right. The space is still open right. because you're still allowing access. Mm -hmm. See, if I open this and I completely unthreaded this, then what happens is I've allowed the access. Mm -hmm. And there's many ways in today's technology to not have access. So here's the thing. If you need to talk to me, email me or text me. I'm not going to pick up the phone anymore. Mm -hmm. There's so many different tools we can use for people who have hurt us in the past. At the end of the day, we are still the problem because we still give access. Really and at good. the core of us giving access, it's because we really have a still a, a live thing that we're addicted to we're that that person, that first, mm. there's still a live wire there. You know, Kim sent me a video about, it was God talking about I mean, narcissism. I'm you. <laughs> and there was one that was funny and she was sending me that one, she thought. And she, it was supposed to be a funny one and I was listening to it, but it wasn't the one she meant. She sent me a text a little bit later that said, don't listen to that one. <laughs> and you know, I, I, dealing with a narcissist, it can yeah. be painful and mm -hmm. you do have to learn how to, someone who exhibits that behavior, I won't use, say someone is that, but that is behaving that way. And, but this one was about the people who enabled the narcissist. Yes. And it said, who would be with a narcissist except another narcissist? Ow. It was very painful because most of the time when you listen to stuff about narcissists, you don't really have to think about yourself a lot. You just can point the finger. Mm -hmm. But she's like, don't listen to that. I'm like, it's too late. <laughs> I'm a narcissist. <laughs> and because it's very self-centered mm -hmm. victim type of a... Uh, I need attention. There's nothing more addicting than a victim mentality. Mm. There's nothing more addicting. And we will fall it's into selfish. victim mentality every minute if we allow ourselves. Every minute. Like somebody said, did you hear what she said about you? And I said, uh-huh. And she goes, does that not affect you? I said, absolutely not. Well, she, I, I haven't, I don't have a space for that. Mm -hmm. I just will That's never good. forget that, you know? that, ex that rope. And mm -hmm. letting it out, pulling That's it good. in. You need to pull it in tight in those situations when you are with people that are not and you're as the trustworthy only one that can with do their it. words or their uh, ac accusations. And you know what? It makes me want to protect your space. I don't want to see you have to draw in from me either mm -hmm. or you. I want to be watchful over what I throw your way. Mm -hmm. I, I, is there anything, I mean, what else? That makes you better. That makes us, I have a whole lesson that I taught years ago about self-centeredness and other-centeredness. And when you truly are delivered from that place of self-centeredness, um, then you are more aware and you live in an other-centeredness, which is exactly what you just said. And going back to the word of, of the, the people of narcissism, there's so many people in relationships with narcissists and they believe if they could just fill in the blank, then he would be different. But narcissism is one of the hardest, hardest things to, uh, to undo. Mm -hmm. And the person who is the narcissist has to be the one fully available and engaged in his or her own game. And otherwise, I, I, I don't really believe that all narcissists attra attract other narcissists, but I will tell you that they do attract codependents. It's the, per it's the Ahab and Jezebel. Yeah. It's the perfect combination. And I always say you cannot have Ahab without Jezebel and you cannot have Jezebel without Ahab. That's true. And the Lord gave me a revelation several weeks ago um, as I was ministering to somebody who is physically abused that at the end of the day, and this is not to put any implication on the actual person who is being abused, but I had this revelation so crystal clear that abusers don't exist unless there's an enabler giving them space to abuse. Mm -hmm. Because I had a, a client that was severely abused by her husband and I saw her out, he came to me, super nice guy. And I remember thinking, if I didn't know any better, I'd swear that she wasn't telling the truth because this guy does not appear to be the guy that she's telling me about. Mm -hmm. And I realized that he's not, if he was a true authentic guy, and I'm not taking responsibility away from him, I'm saying he didn't abuse me. He didn't abuse my friend or my daughter. And there was three of us standing there talking to him. He was as charming as he could be. He abuses where he's given space to mm. abuse. What does that do? That empowers the victim. Because if the victim who's being abused understands that, I just got to close my space in and that's not allowed anymore, then that will, he'll run away. He will literally run away. Mm -hmm. He will literally run away and go find somebody else to abuse. Mm -hmm. So what causes people to not 
to do, not do that. Because there is a chemical addiction inside of you that is addicted to the, the comeback. It's, and I call it the fueling up. So the abuser, what the abuser does is they go in and they, you know, throw gifts and words and affirmations all over you until you get sucked in to that circle. Now you're inside their circle and they control the open or close. You don't control that anymore because you're in their circle. And then when you, then the next step after all the adoration and gifts is to start tearing you down and start telling you how they're better and to start telling you they have to take care of that because you don't know what you're doing. So they start tearing down your self-esteem. Mm -hmm. And when that's torn down, then they come in for the punch, mm -hmm. whether it be physical, emotional, verbal, whatever. Now, when you get a little bit of ornery in you and you get a little bit of guts in you and you start kicking back, the first thing the abuser does is start throwing gifts and words again. Mm -hmm. Cycle. It's the filling up the station. The pattern. I got to fill up the, the car. The car is almost on empty and now it's kicking back on me. Mm -hmm. So I got to fill it up and then start the cycle over again. But the codependent is addicted to the comeback, mm -hmm. is addicted to the comeback. And until you realize that you cannot fix that situation, then you will never leave. When you realize, I can't fix this. I cannot save this guy. I can't love him straight. He's got a mount of issues he came in with. You're just a victim. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like yeah. The, the woman or the man who's being abused is literally the victim. So Carla, this can go, this situation and all that you're bringing us here and, and the 10,000 thoughts that you want to come out with just the 10% right. of thoughts that you were thinking of the past. Be in the past, right. This can be thought, these can be thoughts of like that bad. Yep. And it can be stuff that's just, you know, a teacher said something to you in third grade yep. and, it, and it affected you. I mean, it runs the gamut and all these, how do you know when you need to close it up? What's the tail because sign? Because you've got to re, you've got to re fire and wire those brains in those wires in your brain. You've got to re, you got to start that over. Mm -hmm. Okay. So instead of th those, those neurons in your brain are going to keep wiring and firing and firing and wiring. They're going to do it whether you put in negative thoughts or positive thoughts. And we cannot positive think our way into this healing. Right. That it won't penetrate through the, through the brainstem. So we have to definitely be thinking more on the things of the future. So we got to think gratitude. We got to think on things of love. What, what does the word say? Don't, you know, think on these things, right. right? So we literally have to do that. So every morning before I know... Listen, I've worked girls who've been raped 20 times a day for months and months and months in trafficking. Mm. And this is actually working for them. Wow. So we, we encourage meditation. I don't use like scientific medication. I use spirit-filled uh, meditation. meditation. But it's literally a time that your brain is, not, is stopped. And it's not like, so you can begin to get into that space and see that you're, what you're controlling is just matter that you got to get out of the matter and think about the beyond, mm -hmm. right? And so you can think on the things of the future. You can think on the promises of God. You can think on the, the word of God. You can think on the things that you're grateful for. So it's gratitude, it's love, it's thankfulness, it's serving other people. That is absolutely as easy as it is to start rewiring that brain and to start thinking thoughts on the future. Everybody's like, that's too, that's too easy. I, I, I'm sure I got to be on medication or I'm sure I've got to. No, it is that easy. You literally, so in the morning before my eyes even open, this is what got me out of my horrible um, hole that I was in. I, before my eyes, and I'm like with a big smile on my face and I'm even giggling, Jesus, thank you for my life. Thank you for this bed. Thank you for these sheets. Thank you for the air conditioning above my head. And I'd get up out of bed and walk to the coffee pot. Lord, thank you for this fresh water. Thank you for this machine. Lord, I just love you so much. And I'm like celebrating on my way to the coffee pot. Mm -hmm. And then I sit down and I look at my dogs and I love on them. And Lord, thank you for my dogs. And I just speak life into my dogs. And, and so that now my whole, every time you wake up, you have a fresh new opportunity to change your brain pattern, mm. to bring you change your brain waves. Mm -hmm. You have a fresh new opportunity to stop the 90% of the past and make it 90% of the future. So I get, ex I get up, I'm like, let's go, come on. And I look at my goals and I'm like, I'm gonna be doing that and this and that. And I'm like, I get excited about it. And Go that's ahead. what drives me in that direction. So I don't even have time to think about the past anymore. So I want you to feel how heavy this is. Oh wow, it's heavy. Yeah, isn't that heavy? Like, 
You yeah. can feel, okay, so literally the reason I have you hold that is because I want you to realize every single one of these little balls in this really cool toy is a memory of the past, mm. okay? But I want you to realize, because you just saw, I mean, it's a tiny little ball, but you just saw how incredibly heavy it is, right? But when you take just a few thoughts because you think it's not gonna really do anything and you literally, it attaches itself to the mm, past. They're strong thoughts. They're strong thoughts, attract stronger thoughts and keep you in the past. Oh, so good. So if you, if, you, if you detach that, and I can do the same thing about the future. If I laid this thing out flat, I mean really, really flat, and then I used like this is my future, and then I just used a few, Imagine that being my future and I just used a few thoughts, then I can literally drag the future. Hmm. Hmm. That's what I want. Wow, right. that's good. I want the vision of the future. Yeah. Yeah, so I just wanna challenge you, if you're watching this and this has resonated with you at all, I just wanna encourage you to do this. I want you to sit down and write down the things of the past that you are ready to let go of. I mean, just write, if it takes you hours and hours and a whole notebook, just write it out. Just keep writing the things of the past that you are gonna lay down forever. And then on the next day or keep going, write out things of the future that you're believing God for, that you wanna see your life look like. And if it doesn't scare the fire out of you, you're not dreaming big enough. So dream bigger. And I believe that you can literally exchange the thoughts of the past and go for the thoughts of the future and you can literally turn your life around. Amen. I believe that too. Yes. I believe. And you know, when we agree together, whether we say about the beach house, we agree to this together. Yes. The Lord is right here amongst us all. So Absolutely. will you pray Absolutely. over us? Father God, we know that your plan is not the plans of the past. Father, we know that you tell us that the past is for our wisdom. Father, that we can lean into you for the wisdom that we need to propel us into the future. And so, Father, your word tells us that we have hope for a future. You have plans for us to prosper us, Lord, and not to harm us. And so, Lord, I just ask that every person under the sound of my voice, that I ask that you come in the, into their space right now, Lord, and that you begin to help them break, a, break away from the thoughts of the past and send them on to the plans to prosper them, Father, that they have. I thank you for this ministry, Lord. I thank you for this show. I thank you for the person watching this, that, and I believe right now, and I'm declaring this over their life, that at today is the last day that they would thank be living you. in offense, living in bitterness and living in the past. That as they're hearing my voice, that they're feeling a decision has been made once and for all that they're moving towards the future. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness and thank you that we can cling on to you. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 I I'm feel like we have tools today. Yeah. You've Good. given us some tools. Definitely. Good, I'm so thank glad. You. Thank so you. you're our resident uh, application coach. Let's do it. Right. Right. Coach. We really <laughs> encourage you to connect with Carla. And we also want to encourage you to join us again next time at the Beach House.